It is Friday, March 8th, 2024. This is another edition of Football Today. You know that dude, Justin Pennick from the Talking Giants world. You know that dude as well, Bobby Skinner from the Talking Giants world with a stash. I am Chris Rose. Did did somebody ask you to shave it that way, Bobby, or what happened here? Oh, boy. Go no, T's someone, someone asked me not to do it, so I did it. <laughs> That's the way that he loses life. And now that you've seen it? I do it. I, about once a year, I, I rock the mustache. Um, it's usually, you know, I'm not shaving for whatever reason Then I do want to shave, but I leave the mustache there. I did like the goatee. This, this one's interesting. I always feel like he should be driving an ice cream truck. If he looks like <laughs> my, that. A my bit. dad has a mustache. He owns a tree service though. So maybe, maybe more hard work instead of just driving around giving kids ice cream. Oh, stop. All right. Let's get it going. Uh, right after we were done with, um, With football today, the other day, the the news broke on Russell Wilson. So he's getting released. He's going to be available out there. We know that the Broncos are going to be throwing $39 million at him to not play out there. My question is, and Bobby, we'll start with you. If he accepts the veterans minimum, basically he's playing for nothing. Do you trust him to be able to get a team to the playoffs? What team? Like, is it the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC South? Sure, but... It's going to be him being dragged along. I mean, at, at this point, who's going to want a 35-year-old quarterback who lives out of, you know, lives off of out-of-structure plays to lead the way for them to the playoffs? I, I don't, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago, Rose. I don't know what team is knocking at the Russell Wilson, Wilson door. And if it, whatever team does, it's because they just have a bad QB situation. And I, I don't see a good fit for him really anywhere. Bobby, I'm going to throw another question at you because the one thing that I'm you know, going back and forth with... You didn't want to answer the one I threw out that you didn't like it? No, well, it, it, I feel like this question is necessary to answer this, your oh, question. Oh, okay. Where, you know, Chris, I was, you know, we were, I was mentioning it before we recorded where I almost compare it to the Daniel Jones situation where you see, you know, a good coach, Russell Wilson had a disastrous two years ago, but a good coach comes in and then there's a, a statistically there's a good year right and that's what Russell Wilson had in, in 2022 where statistically it was a good year and you know there was a you know little stretch there where the Broncos were one of the hottest teams in football where mm-hmm. maybe they're you know they were they were on the cusp of a playoff berth right they beat some good teams towards the middle of the season so you look at the stat line for Russell Wilson and it's not terrible like he can maybe go somewhere and be successful he was 13th in EPA and CPOE composite and he was I think top three in CPOE um Bobby do you look at it from the stance of, from a schematic point of view, Russell Wilson was kind of, Sean Payton was kind of, you know, pushing him along, carrying him along there? Or, like, do you think Russell Wilson still has something left in the tank of good football play, even without, like, a really good offensive mind like Sean Payton? I think the box score stats do a good job hiding some of the issues that Russell Wilson had last year. Because, he, ha- I mean, he, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions, like, that's, that's halfway decent, but at what point? At what point did we ever look at that Broncos offense and like you know it's really humming? No, they were just kind of right. they were grinding out games. Russell Wilson, like it looked ugly. Russell Wilson would throw a deep a couple deep, deep balls to Cortland Sutton, and you know they would claw their way to twenty twenty two points. Um, I I just he's thirty five years old. At some point, it does end for these quarterbacks. I'm I'm sure again vet minimum somewhere, whether it's Pittsburgh or wherever, but. I don't see him thriving anywhere. It's crazy. You you mentioned the the stats. He had more touchdown passes, 26 last year, than Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, CJ Stroud. These aren't just dudes. These are some of the best dudes in the league. Yeah. And it's funny because we look at Russ and we're all like, ew. Like, would you ever want him quarterbacking your team? I'm just kind of curious because Bobby it, you said that who wants a 35-year-old that just wants to play off script and not necessarily read defenses to get certainly not a third option and probably not even a second option. But that's the way Russ has pretty much played his entire career. Is it strictly because we were like, oh, he's 26 years old and he can keep a play alive and he can roll out of the pocket and then nobody throws a better deep ball than Russell Wilson? Like, where did this all change with him? I guess is my biggest question. He just kind of fell off is is really the answer i mean he's, th- he's 35 right he's it's not like he's the same player he's not the same player that he once 
was where they were like he was able to do magic and now that just doesn't happen with him anymore if you get him with like some great wide receivers you know i'm sure again he can have a halfway decent season but Where's the where's that landing spot? Because it's not going to be Atlanta. They're going to go. Yeah. Kirk, they're going to get Kirk Cousins the more and more every day. It seems more and more likely that's going to happen. I just don't see the landing spot that's going to help him play well. Pittsburgh, and, like what is it? I I don't think it's Pittsburgh because it sounds like they're not enamored, but they're willing to go to battle with Kenny Pickett and with Mason Rudolph, yeah. and so. Now where do you go? I mean, right. like New England, really? Like you you want to play him over the third pick in the draft, whomever that ends up being? Right. Minnesota, I think they're a team that's going to jump up in the draft from 11 to go get somebody. It's just I can't believe this is kind of where we are with the whole thing. And then it the fact that Sean Payton is so willing to pay $40 million and then a dead cap number of over $80 million to not have him quarterback a team that doesn't have a quarterback. Right. I mean, right. they do. This is the oddest thing. I would get this if they had drafted a young quarterback and said, okay, Russ, you came here. It didn't work out. We're going to go a different draft. And they might draft that. But they are getting rid of him at a time where they look back in there and there's nothing there. Right. It is shocking what has gone on, Panic. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, the one thing that we haven't mentioned, it seems like you want your quarterback to be a leader. You want your quarterback to be a guy that's going to rally the locker room, right? Whether that be by example or whether that be through the spoken word. And it just seems like, especially the last two years in Denver, his teammates. Yeah, now, this was way longer. Even when they were winning freaking being in Super Bowls. Yeah. You heard this he all turns the time. People off. He turns people off. You heard this off. all the time. Richard Sherman saying that Pete Carroll treats Russell Wilson differently. Well, that was okay when he was contending for MVPs. Right. But now he made one play last year that I can remember. One play. It was that Monday nighter against Buffalo where you're like, oh, shit. There's Russ. Yeah. Like, that was it. But that's one play in kind of a lost season. And so I guess it now takes me to this, Bobby. What do you think is Sean Payton's strategy at that position for this year? Well, they, they just feel destined for QB four to six in this draft because uh, the free agent option is not going to be there unless they go the Jacoby Brissett route, which obviously mm -hmm. could do well if that's if that's what they go after. Um, you know, and I, I think they'll I think they will look to free agency to have you know some type of safety net, whether it's Gardner Minshew or whoever whoever else you know fill in the backup quarterback. But they just feel destined at that pick 12 to be picking the fourth to sixth quarterback. Whether that is trading all the way up to get J.J. McCarthy, we've seen this team be pretty, you know, willy-nilly with their draft picks. Um, or if they are taking Bo Nix at 12 or dropping back, trading up in the second round, you know, from the second round. They just feel destined to get QB four to six in the draft. All right. Uh, let's move on. Denver, Russell Wilson wasn't the only guy that was released by Denver. Uh, Justin Simmons, safety, former pro bowler, now age 31. He's gone. One of several big name members of the secondary that has lost their job over the last few days. Jamal Adams, uh, Quandre Diggs, done in Seattle. Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, they're finished in Buffalo. Justin, let's start with you. Which team should be more concerned about their defense moving forward? I mean, I, I think I'm... I think I'm concerned about Seattle, right? Where I th they've given up some big plays in the past. At least Buffalo, you know, they have the coaching over there, um, and they still have some young guys in that in that secondary. Um, but I think just over as the years have gone on, Seattle's allowed more of those big plays, and they've had more inconsistent defenses. But still, breaking up, especially at Buffalo, breaking up the those the duo of safeties there, that's is. That does concern me at least a little bit. I know Bills fans are trying to. I'm seeing. I follow a lot of Bills fans, and we're, they're trying to downplay it. They're trying to under undersell it, but it is a pretty big deal when you break up that much of the secondary. Well, just the Bills defense in general, like they, they're they're in a Super Bowl window, right? Like yeah. they had to get rid of offensive linemen too, right? They didn't just get rid of guys on defense. Um, they've lost five of their eleven defensive starters, and then their best player, Matt Milano, is coming off of injury. Uh, you know, and then they're paying Von Miller to not be very good uh, at the moment, you know, even though he did take a pay cut. The Bills are in a Super Bowl window. We know how tough it is, but I th I believe they have the second best quarterback in the NFL in Josh Allen. Mm. But Sean McDermott is on the hot seat, right? Okay. Like, you know, Day Dable left for the Giants. You know, there was rumors of bad blood there. Then Leslie Frazier gone, and then you fired Ken Dorsey midseason. Like, the pressure's on Sean McDermott to get that defense to perform, but 
they have they still have like good solid players, but the studs like tr- losing Tre'Davious White to me is a is a huge move. They they're keeping Russell Douglas, which is good, but they're in a Super Bowl window and they need that defense to really step up in the playoffs. And you know the, I don't know how much talent they're going to be able to add, so it's going to be a big draft for them. So there are safeties available in free agency a lot, a, a lot. Um, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with bringing guys back on lesser deals. It doesn't happen a ton. Usually some sort of adjustment like Von Miller will be made before you end up hitting the open market. They could end up replacing three of their four starters. I know there's more starters in the secondary these days. I mean, slot corner is a starting position in the yeah. NFL. But Micah Hyde is contemplating retirement. So you're talking about losing two leader veteran guys that know exactly what's going on. They basically have one starting caliber safety on their roster, and that's Taylor Rapp, who just got a new three-year deal. That's it. Yeah. And in a team, they're, they're and he's faced, like a third safety type of guy. Exactly. Anyways. He's more third safety than anything else. Um, Seattle, I'm not as worried about. Mike McDonald is going to build that defense or rebuild it the way he wants to Mm -hmm. okay I don't know if that means trying to find your next Kyle Hamilton but maybe it does and also they've got some young studs at corner I know Reek Woolen took a big step back this year but maybe Michael McDonald can fix him Devin Witherspoon is as good a young corner as there is in the league they still have some pieces that I think are going to be interesting I think they'll kind of all grow up together I'm with you a thousand percent on the whole McDermott thing like I think he's passed the buck on the blame train enough. Now it's got to it's got to stop at him. He's done an amazing job revamping that organization, getting them into the playoffs in whatever year that was, 2017, then getting them to the AFC Championship and it just feels like they're kind of taking these half step back. And now because you've pay, you got to pay the piper. This is what happens in this sport. Yeah. Yeah, and I th- I feel like the Bills are in a spot where <clears throat> they should look to add a wide receiver. But I want to see I want to see them bring in young defensive talent because that's yes. what's going to help. Like can't like what Kansas exactly. City did, right? Where they added young talent and they they hit in the draft, right? Which is at the end of the day, this it's less about drafting positions and and more about drafting good players. Yep. That's what the Kansas City Chiefs did. That's why they were able to win this year when the offense wasn't as good as it was in past years because they had young defensive players while Patrick Mahomes is on the big contract. Um, so they got to add that defensive talent. Over in Buffalo, where, like you said, Seattle, it's a fresh start with them with McDonald. I think they're going to figure out. Like you said, they do have the two young corners. Be interesting, interesting to see if they bring back Leonard Williams, who they traded a second and fifth for midseason. Uh, but to me, Seattle, I mean, Jamal Adams wasn't good. Losing Quandre Adams obviously stinks, but he's not like the best safety in the world. To me, they need that pass rush. Like that's got to be the priority in Seattle's adding pass rush to go with what Mac McDonald's going to do in the back end. One of the stats that I love to look at every year, and I talk about it all the time on Talking Giants, is, ex- is explosive plays. Um, and expo- this is a league where if you produce explosive plays on offense, you win, and if you prevent the explosive plays on defense, you're going to win. And the reason why I initially said Seattle, it's a good call about McDonald coming in because he's definitely going to he's definitely going to limit that for Seattle. But Seattle, as the years have gone on, notoriously just allow a ton of explosive pass plays. And they were in the upper echelon of the league in terms of explosive pass plays allowed this year, while Buffalo, I believe, t- like around seventh. Uh, seventh in the least amount of explosive pass plays allowed. So I kind of trust McDermott. I try to co- tr- kind of trust that coaching and the secondary that they have there a little bit more. Obviously, you got to add talent. you got to add through the draft because it's pretty thin right now. But I do just trust that staff from Buffalo that they're going to they're gonna keep that down. They're going to keep that secondary intact. Uh, one other note, by the way. Seattle um, wouldn't surprise me if Geno Stone ends up there, right? He was second in the league right. in picks. Michael McDonald, you always bring in somebody, you know, they might end up overpaying for him, but that's what free agency is for until yep. we end up cutting you two years into a four year deal. Is it crazy? He was the third safety in Baltimore. Just yeah, he casually ended up, just led the league. <laughs> yeah, he ended up, he ended up uh, playing pretty well. Um, by the way, our, our buddy Dalton Feely, always keeping a good eye out for us. At the time of this recording, and we're recording it at a different time on Thursday because of uh, ball and play that we've been doing, Jalen Johnson has reached an agreement on a four-year extension to stay CB1 in Chicago. I'm happy about that. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense um, for a team that I think is – has a chance to make some real strides if they yep. don't screw up this draft sort of thing. I'll be curious to see the numbers on it. It's going to be four huge. for 76, 54 guaranteed. 54 so, guaranteed. 
Yeah, so 19 mil per year, essentially two and a half years worth of it guaranteed. Um, I guess that would be closer to three. Yeah, three years guaranteed. Um, he's a good player, and Chicago made it like known that he is staying on the Bears. They knew like if we can't get a deal done before the tag deadline, we're going to tag him, and then they get one a couple of days, get it done a couple of days later. He's a good player. That defense needs to stay intact. Uh, I, you know, I know we're, we're not going to do a whole Chicago Bears segment, which I'm sure we'll do at some point. I'm excited about Chicago. They're going to get Caleb Williams. They have the ninth pick in the draft. They have other mm-hmm. draft capital. They've got some money to spend in free age. I am, I'm really excited to see Chicago next year. Yeah, their defense played really well the second half mm-hmm. of last season. Now, they just can't screw up that shit on offense. They can't keep doing that. But they're going to end up at the nine pick to me is the key one here. Because you can you can possibly get the best player at a certain position right. at quarterback at one and at something else at nine. So you're right, Bobby. We're not going to talk a ton about this right now, but it is really, really interesting. Um, Pennock, we'll start with you on this one. And we're getting kind of mixed messages out of Cincinnati on Joe Mixon. There are several reports that say he's going to be cut and they're going to save about $6 million. But this is a team that's about $50 million under the cap. If they get rid of him, is this a mistake? No. no. I I, I think Chase Brown played well down the stretch for them. Uh, I, I think Mixon just hasn't been. He's one of those running backs that just hasn't been the the same player um, for over the last couple of years. And I think kind of just distancing yourself from that isn't, isn't a bad thing. Get the efficient guy in here. This team is going to be built around Higgins. It's going to be built around uh, Jamar Chase and obviously around Joe Burrow. So... I don't think there's a need to have that kind of financial hit for for a running back on that roster. Yep, Mixon has been bottom half of the NFL in success rate the last few years. His yards per carry has been 31st, 37th, 27th. Obviously, some of that is an offensive line status too, but they need to invest that cap space in other spots and get themselves ready for this Burrow contract, right? The cap hit in 2025 is $46 million. It goes up every single year, and there's already void. Like, that contract's going to be... You know they 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 could find themselves in a similar situation to Buffalo right now, and I feel like getting every penny ready and investing that more you know more efficiently is big for them. But you think they're going to go draft and go cheap instead of? I mean, we've never seen a free agent running back class this decorated. No. Now they all they all have warts for the most part, mm-hmm. but you're not going to get them for free, so. Why not just take Joe Mixon? I mean, these other guys aren't, I don't know, maybe you guys think I'm nuts, but that much better than Joe Mixon, who's kind of ingrained in that locker room, has been a leader, and say what you want about him. He's been a solid player. Yeah, cap hits eight and a half million this year. I, I don't know. I, I I think it's just the way that like I think the Bengals should be building their team. Where again, I think they're. So what do you do? Do you draft? Are you saying do you draft? Or yeah. are you okay with paying somebody else that's not Joe Mixon? No, I'm I'm all draft. right with draft, and then you have the rotation of guys they have right now. Because you're going to be throwing the ball. Like you're going to be like your your offense is Joe Burrow throwing on early downs, and really, you know, one of the only times that you're really. Running the ball and looking for a first down is like third and short, second and short, third and short, fourth and short. They, they've got to bring back DJ Reader, who's a beast of a nose tackle. Mm-hmm. I know he got injured last year, but I think they're going to try and bring him back. Uh, I think they're going to continue to try and invest in the offensive line. It seems like they're signing big offensive linemen every single year. Um, you know, I know Jonah Williams is a free agent. So, but they kind of have, they, to me, they got to set themselves up, even though they could afford it this year for. You know, years 2025 to 27 and investing $8 million in a running back who's been, you know, bottom of the league in efficiency is yeah. to me is not the the path for them. Yeah, I, I guess that at the end of the day, I mean, listen, it is it is really become a numbers game. And I don't think people are paying for leadership, although I do think that you have to start thinking about it a little bit. Talking about a guy who's been there for an awfully long time. He's still only 28. He hasn't hit that magic number of 30. I know it feels weird. It feels right? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, you can't say only 28 with the running back position though. That's like thir- that's like 30 in every other position. Yeah. yeah I guess so. Um, that's fair. Let's let's talk about your Giants, shall oh boy. we? boy. Here we go. Bobby, you didn't use the franchise tag on either Saquon or Xavier McKinney, but let's focus on the offensive playmaker here. Do you have a perfect landing spot for Saquon Barkley? 
the perfect landing spot for him is where he's probably going to end up if the Giants aren't matching his contract. And that's the Houston Texans, right? You know, for all the reasons we just said that the Bengals should, you know, move on from Joe Mixon, you see all the opposite reasons why the Texans should make a splash at, at running back with Saquon Barkley. You know, you have CJ Stroud in the second year of, you know, five years of, you know, a, a rookie contract. You know, you've got a you know, good receiving core, Nico Collins and Tank Dell. They just brought, they just uh, extended Dalton Schultz on a three year contract. You have Laramie Tunsil at left tackle, some other young pieces on the offensive line. And you would want to see them invest their draft capital into that defense. Uh, so I think they have the fourth most cap space in the NFL. Saquon is a nice, like, finishing piece on, on that offense. I'm going to go with Baltimore. I'm really rooting for Baltimore to go out and get Saquon Barkley. I mean, obviously, it makes all the sense of the world for Houston to go out and get Saquon Barkley, but um, I'm rooting for Baltimore because I think Saquon, at this point of his career, he actually he was pretty he was pretty efficient for a really bad offensive line last year, where uh, rushing yards over expected. He was like 12th in the league amongst running backs that got at least 150 carries. So that's that's really impressive for how bad the Giants' rushing offensive line was. Which you know, Bobby and I we've been doing this talk of Giants thing since 2018 and 2019, and we've had some pretty bad all lines. Last year was like the worst run blocking wise I think we've seen. Um, so I'm rooting for him to go to Baltimore because I think that line is set up, the way that they run block there is set up perfectly. And I think Barkley, at this point in his career, while he's he's not the most efficient running back in the league, but he's also not inefficient where I think he's like maybe earlier in his career where he's going to give you a lot of negative carries and it's going to be kind of his fault and it's his, it's his brain and not seeing the hole. Where I think Baltimore, they'll give him the volume. And I think that's going to be really important for Saquon at this point in his career. 2022, he got that volume and he gave you 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, and a lot of receiving yards as well. So I think Baltimore will give him that volume, finally getting that workhorse in there. And I think that's where his kind of strengths at this point in his career will be utilized the best. You guys have no fun. The you Chargers? guys don't like any stories. No, we don't need him out there. Philadelphia. Oh. What the hell? Don't you want to see him twice a year? Dallas. Don't you want to see him? Uh, Dallas. Now, that would be interesting. Yeah. But Philadelphia actually makes some sense, right? DeAndre Swift, he's gone. I think Boston Scott is finally done, which means he won't be scoring touchdowns against your boys, so somebody else has to. I think, I believe, if I'm right, if I did this, Kenneth Gainwell, it looks like, is the only guy that you can kind of rely on that's coming back for now. So yeah, but why they, they, they've shown they don't need the running back, though. Right? I know they, that. They let this... Miles Sanders go. Miles Sanders go, and he he was awful this year. Like, flat-out awful. They bring in DeAndre Swift, who I'm not a big fan of, who I think has, like, some of the worst vision in football. He's just gotten to play behind two of the best offensive, line in, in offensive lines in Detroit and Philly. If there's any team that shouldn't be investing, like, they should go after – if the Eagles are going to go after a New York Giant, they should be going after Xavier McKinney. They need help in that safety. Yes, room. they do. Um, I, to me, that would be a, a bad use of resources for the Eagles. No, no, it's not. Because sometimes Nick Sirianni needs, somebody needs to help him. And Saquon could be the guy that helps him win some games. Man, when they were falling and falling and falling, they kept putting shit on Jalen Hurts. I know their defense was horrible. Horrible. They need to improve really in the back seven. I, I get that. But man... Come on, Saquon. Wouldn't it be fun to watch him go against your Giants twice a year? I mean, here's the thing for, for Philly. No, it would not. Um, <laughs> that's, I think there's a reason why Bobby and I both said AFC teams. But <laughs> I think with Eagles, I mean, they seem to be a team that's running back by committee. That's that's what it seems that's to be. That's part of the problem right. here. It really is. Get, give me your dog. When I know that we're up four yeah. and we got to run the clock out, you, you know that you're giving it to Saquon Barkley. You can't right. look around and go, eeny, meeny, miny, miny. Like, that shit drives me nuts. I know Bobby's not buying it, but. I mean, they had a thousand yard rushing seasons with DeAndre Swift and Miles Sanders. Like, I, how much more is Saquon Barkley adding um, to, to that, right? Like, he can do some things in the receiving game, that even though he's not like the best receiving back in the NFL. Um, they, I mean, you t you talk about all the issues that they have to fix on defense and corners and stuff. They, to me, they've got to invest elsewhere. So I'm not doubting that. I think, you know, because it's already, it's already been reported that the Eagles are maybe involved in it. I'm not doubting they're involved in it and they're checking in on it. 
but I am doubting that the Eagles are going to give Saquon Barkley enough compared to a team like the Houston Texans, maybe the Ravens, maybe some other teams, even the Chargers. Uh, like I think those teams may be giving him more um, than what Philly's willing to give for sure because they've shown in the past that they're they're not willing to break the bank. I mean, Miles Sanders got six and a half million dollars last year, and the Eagles are like, no, thank you. Well, I think Saquon's better than Miles Sanders. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. But like, they, I don't think they really want to pay a running back. And again, right. Saquon is misses games every year. That's He's true. you know entering year seven. Um, I I just don't see that as uh, he'll do well there, obviously. Um, but I don't see that as. Like something again. If they're going to go after New York Giants, you didn't they like should go my after answer. Just McKinney. say it, Rose. I didn't like your answer. Just say I thought it. you were going to go Chargers. The Chargers would be a lot of fun to see him in a Greg Roman offense. Um, you know, playing that gap, you know, running scheme the way that they. I mean, they pull guys literally every single play. Yeah, and they fun. they're going to have a good running game no matter what, and have him fill. You know, play there would be fun to watch. But, uh, yeah. All right. If he goes to Dallas, it'd be the first time he ever witnessed a Dallas loss. This is this is ah. true. This is true. <laughs> uh, Joe Flacco, we know that he saved Cleveland's season last year. Said he would love to come back. His first inclination is try to be a starter somewhere. He said, but if we're talking backup role, if if that's what I'm relegated to these days in free agency, then Cleveland's the perfect spot for me. He said the way that everybody treated me in the organization and the fans, like that's where my heart is. The question is. Could he really sit behind Deshaun Watson and have this thing work out, Bobby? Yeah, if he wants a job. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, let's Justin, let's do some therapy with Rose. Sure. Uh, do you can you name the player that had a higher interception rate than Joe Flacco last year? Higher interception rate? Yeah. You, there was only one player. I'm just saying, if there could be two, who do you think? Just give me a name that you think might it be. Might have had a higher in the league? Yeah. Oh, Christ, who threw a ton of interceptions last year? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Nope, it's nobody. Um, he threw 10 interceptions in six games. He had the highest interception rate in the NFL. That's Are you I'm, including that inter, uh, that playoff game? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not. That in, that doesn't include the oh. – you're right. That you that. He threw 10 interceptions in six games, but the interception rate is a regular season stat. Yeah. That's, um, that's why I was silent. I was right. This is yeah. this is the best spot for him as a backup, right? Like, congratulations, you're much better than P.J. Walker and Dorian Thompson Robinson. Huh. Uh, but he's he's a backup. And any I think any team that would invest as him, as even as like a bridge starter, I think would be silly at this point. Yeah, I think... Cleveland, I, I, a lot of quarterbacks fit what Cleveland wants to do and, Ke and Kevin Stefanski wants to do. I, I, I do view Stefanski as one of the best offensive minds in football. I, it's not even, it's not even, it would, would, Flack, would it work with Flacco and what? I am still just extremely worried. And I, if it hasn't already, this Deshaun Watson contract is going to go down as the worst contract in sports history. Hmm. It's going to go down as the worst. And it's probably going to wind up. Worse in, than Anthony Rendon? Yes. I don't. Yes. Who, who really? That? Okay. Well, he plays third base sometimes for the Angels. Yes. Wow. Okay. I think, I think it will be worse because it's it's fully. Well, I guess baseball is fully guaranteed too. I, I don't, well, baseball I, doesn't hey. have a salary cap. So, yes. Right. You're right. Because I, I think this will just, it will, it will ruin Kevin Stefanski's job. Who I think he's a very, very good head coach. I think Deshaun Watson is going to bring down the entire ship with him. And I don't think he's, I think, I don't think he's going to play well. Now, it's not even a matter of if Watson plays bad and Joe Flacco's there, there's going to be whispers, whispers. Oh, Joe Flacco led us to the playoffs last year. That's not the main issue. It's just that Deshaun Watson, I think, is inevitably going to play bad. It's not the issue if you have Joe Flacco on the bench. Mm -hmm. It's the issue is that you're paying. You, this is the highest paid quarterback ever, fully guaranteed contract, and he's going to stink. I, well, well, I want to help you out, Rose. Yeah. And, uh, to, def to rebut Justin a little bit. Deshaun Watson was like really good, and he's not old. It's not like a Russell Wilson situation where he's 35. Right. Why can't he be good again? It's a good question. Uh, it's the it's really one of the great mysteries. Um, I don't I don't know exactly what it is, but I can just tell you this: as a lifelong Browns fan, the team operated differently when Flacco was in there. 
Really did. And I know that he did throw his fair share of interceptions, but it also just felt smoother. It looked smoother. Now, the thing about Watson is that he's had 12 starts in a Browns uniform because of injuries and suspension. He's looked Deshaun Watson in two of them, I would say. Baltimore, his last game that he played last year when he broke his shoulder, and week three against Tennessee. The season before, he had a good half against Washington, and that was pretty much it. Um, I don't know why he, I, I don't know why he can't get back to there. I, everybody said, "Oh well, wait until you see Deshaun Watson in a Kevin Stefanski offense." I don't know, man. I'm really concerned that they're just not a perfect fit. Right. And I actually like Stefanski's offense more than I like Watson's ability right now. I agree. It scares what the does hell Watson out of do it. wrong? Like you've watched him basically every play. What does he do it's, wrong? It's very much a. It's not one, two, three. It's one, one, and then make things up. It's almost like he's a younger Russ Wilson. Yeah, that's what it feels like. There's no, whereas there were a ton of times. Yes, I know about the Flacco interceptions where he would hit other guys. He would hit the second or third guy in the route, and that just doesn't happen. It hasn't happened a lot with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, out of quarterbacks with 150 minimum plays. Um, if you don't know what EPA and CPOE is, by the way, EPA is basically, it's a way to evaluate, you know, it's expected points added. It's a way to evaluate kind of value and how many points, you know, how many points you're putting up on the board, helping your team provide value on the field. And then CPOE is completion percentage over expected. It's a, it's an accuracy stat. So out of quarterbacks with a minimum of 150 plays, Deshaun Watson was 26 in the league and Joe Flacco was 27th. And really what really hurts you in EPA is throwing interceptions. So the fact, even with those interceptions, the fact that those two guys were right next to each other and Watson was slightly slightly higher, it, it, again, it's it's not good. The quarterback that was right above Watson and Flacco, Justin Fields, Ryan Tannehill, Kyler Murray. Hey. Yeah, guys aren't helping me much. Um, so if I, But if I were Cleveland, I would probably invest. I would look to upgrade over Joe Flacco because of the Sean Watson stuff. If he gets injured again. Because he, I think what Flacco did wasn't show that he's still got it. I think what he showed is like, if you get Gardner Minshew or whoever fill in the blank who can run this offense efficiently, efficiently, like you can get the most out of Amari Cooper and David and Joku, right? Like you saw David and Joku's stats fly up, you know, fly up once Joe Flacco took over. You know, you saw Baker Mayfield have you know a good year there before things fell apart in the COVID season, um, right? Like Stefanski's offense has shown more good than bad. It's just had more bad than good quarterback play since he's been there. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they work with the run game. Nick Chubb coming back, uh, that obviously struggled Hopefully. down, down, down the stretch. But I, I would, I would look to upgrade there instead of trying to recapture some magic from the feel good story of Joe Flacco. Well, it'll be interesting because Andrew Barry, their GM, does say backup quarterback is a top thirty position for him on yeah. a roster, so he does value it. They've obviously sunk all of this money, and Watson's going to have a $64 million cap hit if they do not restructure it this year moving forward. It was in the low 20s this year. So we'll see where they go. Uh, next time we do this show, we're going to have free agency next Woo. week. Get ready, because that that shit's wild. Uh-huh. Are you, you ready? Have you guys oh, done you, your You have to make sure you shower before noon. Like, you know, make sure you get everything you needed done Monday morning before noon, because... It's it's literally nonstop. It's long hours, long nights, but a lot of fun. Screen time. What's your screen? What's going to be your screen time on Monday? Uh, well, I mean, I don't really get off of my phone. I'm like sure. I'm like a sophomore in high school <laughs> with that thing. I just don't. I don't stop. So the screen time. I always get my weekly. Hey, you were on the screen this long. Last week, I got something that said, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. That's what the message said. What the hell are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> What's one free agent you want the Cleveland Browns to sign? Um, God, I know Christian Wilkins is a is going to be a lot of money, but to put him on a defensive line fun. next in between Dalvin Tomlinson and Miles Garrett, that would be pretty good. Make the strength with strength, right? That, that would be a lot of fun. I, 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 I would root for that. Like, I want to see Jim Schwartz. You know, have another good, great year with that Cleveland defense. That would be, that would be fun. You know what what Wilkins does as a pass rusher, pairing with what Dalvin Tomlinson does as the run defender, would be a really nice mix there. And then obviously Miles Garrett being a stud. So 
Yeah, I, I'm so that's the player who I'm the most excited to see go somewhere because I want him to sign with some a team like Cleveland that already has a good D line and let him just be one of the pieces. Do you guys have one for the Giants? Give uh, Justin, give me one. Do I have one? I mean, give me a give me a really good Michael and Wanu coming over. We're gonna keep running guys out to tackle. Yeah, if, if we can't drop, Guard, tackle. if we can't draft them in the top seven, we're gonna go spring some money. For I am them. not very, I am not very enthused about our Giants. Okay, Bobby. <laughs> Well, since Justin already took an offensive lineman, I'll say Danelle Hunter, the pass rusher from Danielle the Hunter? Vikings. Oh, yeah. my God. Holy smokes. That guy's a baller, man. Mm-hmm. That guy is – he's he's really one of the best players that nobody ever talks about in this league. He is sen- – he's sensational. Yeah, you, he's a beast. Yeah, he's going to cost you some money. All right, uh, I believe we're going to try and do this show maybe Tuesday. We're going to let things hopefully shake out a little bit. But we'll uh, we'll put it out there when we, when we do uh, finally get this thing all – bolted down mm. uh producer mikey always does a fantastic job for my talking giants buddies bobby and justin i am chris rose we will see you next week during free agency here on football today